But if you don't deliver a bombshell on Thursday, don't you run the risk of losing the public's attention here? Uh, we're aiming at people, an audience, frankly, that still has an open mind about these facts. Yeah. Uh, we want to counter uh, the continuing propagation of big lies, and, and that's, that's what our goal is. We're a year and a half uh, away from the attack. Trump is no longer the president. The test for the committee really is here to, to figure out how they're going to get people to tune back in to all the results of their investigation and their eventual report. I think people are going to be absolutely surprised uh, how much was known with multiple groups. And I think that's what's going to be exciting to see the committee. There's some very, talented, very talented investigators behind the doors. I think, uh, I do think they're going to be very successful in those six, I think, in those six hearings. What makes these hearings different than the uh, impeachment hearings is that uh, this is the product of much more investigation. They don't want you know, a dry presentation that people are going to tune out of, right? They're holding these hearings in prime time and in, in top morning um, slots where they're hoping to get the maximal amount of media coverage. The committee has been very tight-lipped about who exactly they want to call as witnesses. What we can expect is that they will be people uh, that were perhaps in the vice president's inner circle and in Trump's inner circle. We're not commenting on specific witnesses. It's certainly one of the themes that we will be fleshing out is the, the fact that in advance of the 6th uh, that there was an understanding of the propensity for violence that day. The committee has announced two witnesses for Thursday's hearing. Capitol Police Officer Caroline Edwards, the first law enforcement officer who was injured by rioters, and filmmaker Nick Quested, a documentary filmmaker who took footage of much of the riot on January 6th. This is all part of the committee's attempt to try to tell um, the story of what happened that day. Republicans have been struggling to figure out how exactly to respond to these hearings. They don't have that much insight into how the committee's been planning and, and who exactly uh, they're trying to call to testify and the like. Since the only two Republicans on the panel, um, Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois and Liz Cheney of Wyoming, are no fans of the current House Republican leadership. We have too many people now in the Republican Party who are not taking their responsibility seriously and who have pledged their allegiance and loyalty to Donald Trump. Um, look, my view on the committee has not changed. They're not conducting a legitimate investigation. It seems as though they just want to go after their political opponents. Democrats on the Hill I've talked to are certainly interested in what this committee has been doing and what um, they'll present at the end. But it, it is worth remembering that these hearings are happening uh, against broader uh, political headwinds for Democrats on the Hill, right? They've seen much, much, much of their legislative agenda stalled out. They're looking at an increasingly bad midterm. But the one thing that has changed in America, higher inflation that we haven't seen since the 70s, unsecured border, gas prices, and now we don't have baby formula. So well, you can There are rumblings among Republicans of trying to put out some kind of counter report. It will have not nearly the same kind of impact that the January 6th committee's report will have simply because they lack the kind of subpoena power and you know, legislative authority that a congressional committee like this has. Most Americans generally do rank other issues higher than January 6th in, in terms of how they'll vote in November. The most Americans are talking about things like inflation and gas prices and, and even gun control and, uh, and abortion more recently. Whether this affects the midterms is really something that remains to be seen. This is something that some Democrats certainly see as a way to show Republicans as unfit for office in uh, you know the coming elections or even in 2024, especially as you know, some Republican candidates really have embraced some of these uh, conspiracy theories about the 2020 election. If you didn't like President Trump before the hearing, you're probably still not going to like him. If you did like President Trump going into the hearing, well, you're not going to watch or pay attention to any part of it, so you're still going to like President Trump on the other side. They think in their minds, well, people at home will stop what they're doing at 8 p.m. at night. People have better things to do in their lives. Trump has, has regularly railed against the, the committee even since it was started. As they actually go into these hearings, Trump will have suffered from the same issue that House Republicans do, which is that they don't actually have that much insight into what the committee is doing. So we can expect much of what Trump world and, and Republicans writ large to be mostly reactive um, to what comes out.
President Biden really has been hands off um, for most of this whole process. The January 6th committee, does he have any expectation or hope or desire uh, for what they may or may not do with regard to the former president? We are going to continue to work uh, to support their efforts, to support uh, the important work that committee is doing, uh, but he's not going to prejudge the outcome of that committee either. Unlike uh, you know, other congressional investigations, there's somewhat of a less clear end goal. The committee uh, can present legislative findings at the end. They can present its report. They can present uh, ways to try to safeguard democracy. But it's not as concrete of an ending as, say, impeaching the president and then either having uh, him convicted or acquitted. In addition to what the committee has been doing here on the Hill, there is a parallel Department of Justice investigation into January 6th and its aftermath. We know that the Department of Justice has you know, still been uh, wrapping up its investigation into all of the defendants, but they have touched in some ways um, the committee's investigation as well. So even if uh, the congressional side of this wraps up, there still will be this um, uh, Department of Justice side of the investigation.